Well, good afternoon again. We introduced you to eight career opportunities in healthcare this morning, but now you may be wondering what are the next steps I need to take if I'm interested in pursuing one of these rewarding careers? And to answer those questions, I'm going to turn it over to Jaron Caffrey, Caffrey, excuse me, Jaron, Jaron Caffrey from KJ to facilitate our panel of experts. Jaron? Yeah, thank you, Cindy. And again, thanks everybody for being on today. And um, I know it's been quite a morning, and so there's a lot that uh, hopefully you have learned that you didn't know before. Um, and whether you're a student in high school or in college or maybe a professional that has worked in any kind of career for a while but maybe is interested in making a change to healthcare, uh, our next panel for the next 20 to 30 minutes, we're really going to dive into wherever you might be at, some opportunities to really get engaged and take those next steps in the process. So uh, we have the four folks that you see on your screen and we're, we'll get to each one of those um, in just a moment. But Michelle with the Board of Regents, we are going to start with you and maybe Michelle, you know, introduce yourself, but also maybe share with us and everyone on the call today, you know, what are some of those programs, specifically things like the Promise Act that mostly everyone on the call today might be eligible for and really use that to help kickstart their next steps. Sure, and thank you, Jaron, and hello, everyone. So my name is Michelle Ariano, and I'm the Director of Student Financial Assistance at the Kansas Board of Regents. So before I talk about the State of Kansas scholarships and grants that we offer, I wanted to really strongly encourage all the attendees today that are pursuing higher education starting this fall to complete the FAFSA, which is the Free Application of Student Aid, a Federal Student Aid. Please do this right away if you have not already done so. So all of the State of Kansas scholarships do require the FAFSA to be submitted, and the deadlines for all the scholarships and grants that I'll talk about today are going to be listed on our website. So Jaron mentioned the Kansas Province Act Scholarship. So this is a service scholarship, and it's available for students going to community colleges and technical schools that offer associate and certificate programs in what um, the state of Kansas designates as a high wage, high demand, or critical need field. And this includes, of course, fields in mental and physical health care. So to qualify for the Kansas Promise Act Service Scholarship, you must be a Kansas resident, a US citizen, complete the FAFSA and our online application, and then also meet some income guidelines. So they're pretty generous um, income guidelines you, for a family household of an income of 100,000 or less for a family of one or two, um, 150,000 or less for a family of three, um, and then any households higher than that, you would just add on um, 4,800 per additional family member. So the Kansas Promise Act scholarship covers all tuition, required fees, and required books and supplies. So you can receive up to $20,000 or up to 80, um, 68 credit hours, which are covered, whichever one of those comes first, but you must complete your program within 36 months. So this is a service scholarship. So if you um, get this award, you do need to enter into an agreement with the state of Kansas and live and work in Kansas for consecutive two years after you complete your program. Um, so I have a couple of more I want to definitely discuss with you. Um, the first one being the adult learner grant. So this is a new state scholarship. It's much like the Promise Act, but it does have a set award amount. So this award is for Kansas residents of 25 years or older. Um, the amount is $3,000 per semester, and it's for students who want to enroll full-time or part-time and take up to 48 months to complete a baccalaureate degree. So with this, it does require a FAFSA and our state application, meet the income guidelines, which are exactly the same as the Promise Act, and you have to enroll in one of the state universities, Washburn University, or a private nonprofit institution in the state of Kansas. Um, and the programs that are eligible are, of course, programs in the healthcare field or nursing. So this is also a service requirement. So um, for this scholarship, you must live and work in Kansas for at least two consecutive years upon completion of the program. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next one, which is also another one that's really targeted towards nursing. So we have the Kansas Nursing Service Scholarship. This is available for public and private four-year institutions as well as communicate, um, community colleges. Again, must complete the FAFSA and our state application. This is a merit-based award. So you do have to have merit for this scholarship. Um, 
It does require financial need if we receive more scholarship applicants than the funding allowance that we have. I mean, it does require full-time enrollment. So with this scholarship, it is a sponsor program. So you do have to um, acquire a sponsor. Um, and what that is, is either um, an adult care home, medical care facility, a health agency, local health department, or state agency, which will employ um, LPNs or RNs. Um, and the sponsorship must provide partial scholarship funding for this as well. So the service obligation is one year of service for one year of scholarship, and the amount of the scholarship is $3,500 for an RN or $2,500 for an LPN each school year. Um, we also got some questions earlier about the Career Technical Workforce Grant. So this one is available to technical schools, community colleges, and state universities with technical programs, which includes programs that are healthcare related. So again, this one does require the FAFSA and state application, and priority is given to students with financial need. There is not a service requirement, and the award is a straight $1,000, and it's available to um, part-time students and full-time students. We do have this last one, which is the Kansas Comprehensive Grant. So this grant is only available to students with financial needs, so it does, again, require the FAFSA. It is for Kansas residents who are going to be enrolled in a full-time um, university at one of our private colleges, um, state university, Washburn University as well. And this award is actually given directly to the institutions. So they are going to be the ones to um, divvy out the money to students. And their deadlines are all going to be different. So they do have priority deadlines for the FAFSA. And the funds range from $200 to $10,000 um, for a private institution or $100 to $4,000 at the public institutions. Well, Michelle, this is very, very helpful. And I think, you know, I, I know attendees, I hope they were taking notes, which, by the way, Michelle, the link that she mentioned for the Board of Regents, it's in the chat. Um, so you can get a recap of all everything that she just mentioned. And it's also located on um, happyandhealthcare.org. And I think, you know, Michelle, just to reiterate and hammer at home, you know, I think a lot of students or just, you know, again, adults, wherever you're at in your journey, they might be thinking, well, man, if I want to go into healthcare, it might require me to get some kind of schooling or additional education. But again, what it sounds like from you is there is a lot of opportunities out there to pay for a huge chunk of it, if not potentially even all of it, especially for those going to the tech and community college level. So um, again, those deadlines, did you say most of those are in this fall or when should students start maybe applying for those? Yes, for students who want to go to school that's starting this fall, our deadlines are coming up. So they're going to be throughout this spring semester and each scholarship does have a different deadline. The Promise Scholarship, which is the biggest one, has a much later deadline. So students who are still kind of deciding if they want to do that technical school or community college have some time to think about that. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for all of that. And again, everyone, I encourage you to check out those links to get a recap of that and information on how to apply and then take your next steps to, um, to really finance your education to um, ensure that you're not having to pay out of pocket, or if you are, it's hopefully at a very limited amount. So, well, thank you, Michelle. And we're going to shift gears a little bit to Aaron Connect with the State Department of Education that's with us. Again, one of our sponsors, in addition to the Board of Regents, helping uh, really organize and put this event on. Um, so great to have you here, Aaron. And you know, again, maybe you just take a chance to introduce yourself as well in the Department of Education um, and maybe tell, you know, there's a lot of students that are in maybe middle school to high school and that's uh, age group and, and that part of their journey. Um, and maybe what should students, if they are in high school, what could they be doing now? And what are some maybe things that your department can provide um, that they should be aware of? Hi, thank you for having me. I'm Erin Kinnett, and I am an education program consultant here at KSCE. I oversee the health and bioscience career cluster pathway, if you happen to be part of that. So things that high school students can do um, would be to take relevant science courses, such as biology, chemistry, anatomy and physiology, even some medical terminology, pharmacology. Some pathways offer a lot of course options. And as you have experienced, through this wonderful event. There are lots of ways to be involved in the health career field. And so our courses do align with those opportunities. I would say maintain a strong academic record. Um, 
be sure that you've got a high GPA. The higher the GPA, the more options that are available to you. Get involved, participate with some extracurricular activities, especially HOSA. I know she uh, will be, Tina will be talking about that a little later. Um, as many of our participants have um, highlighted, get, get out there, job shadow, talk to professionals. It, you really don't know the profession until you get an experience of job shadowing. Um, even if it is just for a few hours, really get out there and see what the work is like. I would say develop really great communication skills. You'll want to be able to articulate, and that goes for any career, articulate your abilities and really listen. When you're out there job shadowing, really listen and pay attention. And again, this event has done a great job really opening that window um, for you to be able to listen. I would say uh, participate if you have the opportunity and some research. Um, consider some of those dual credit courses, as Michelle was highlighting, um, some of those can be paid for. Develop those strong study habits, you know, go to bed. I know it's not always easy when you're in high school. Go to bed early, but go to bed early. Um, get up early. <laughs> and then I would seek some guidance from your counselors. Your counselors have connections into your local areas. So really talk to them and see what's available in your specific area. And I would also like to highlight, um, we have a opportunity for seniors specifically called the CTE Scholar. And it closes March 1, but it's a great way to really get recognized. Um, what you would have to do is fill out an application. You'll wanna have three secondary credits uh, in a health science pathway, and then earn a end of pathway credential or there's four options, or you could have nine plus college credit hours or complete a high quality work-based learning prep or an Excel and CT recognized credential. And I believe Jaren will be putting that information into the chat so that it's more easy for you to get your hands on. Yes, that's right. I think we might have a slide if they're able to pull that up now or, or we'll get that to everybody certainly with a follow up and there I think you can see it on your screens exactly what Aaron you were just mentioning. Um, and so it sounds like as part of that pathway and, and opportunities for students, even if a, if a school doesn't fully have the pathway that you described, there's opportunities if a student can get their CNA um, certification while in high school or other certifications. Is that right, Aaron? Yes, that's exactly right. So it's a great opportunity to get recognized. It's a great way to make connections and get some of that education um, and credentialing in high school versus in college. Well, awesome. Well, thank you, Aaron, and the Department of Education for that information. And again, um, for those that registered and sent, were sent the Zoom link in advance, there was some information on that, and we'll certainly send more in the follow-up email afterwards. So thank you, Aaron, and, and shifting gears once more to our next panelist, we have Tina Gerritsen here with HOSA and the Area Health Education Center here in the state of Kansas. Tina, uh, we're, we're very glad to have you on today as well. Um, again, if you might introduce yourself, um, tell us a little bit about HOSA. Um, I'm sure we have some HOSA students on the call today, but maybe if a, if, if a student is at a school that has a HOSA chapter, um, but is not in that chapter, how could they join? Or if a school is on the call, they don't have a HOSA chapter, can they create one? Is that something that, that they are able to do? Well, again, thank you for having me here, um, and thank you for that introduction, Jaren. So I am Tina Garrison. Um, if you're wondering about the name change, I got married recently. So if you've heard of me as Tina Goes, that's the difference. Um, but HOSA is a career technical student organization that is 100% healthcare focused. Um, and if you have a HOSA chapter in your school and you're wanting to get involved, um, talk to those students, find out who the local advisor is for your chapter, and that would be the easiest way to get involved. Those local advisors are going to be your connection, um, and they can help you with all the things. There are some membership costs that are associated. Membership for the entire year is $20, um, and then there is registration costs with conferences, but we are working to always make those lower for students. But the $20 um, is something you can expect to join 
and that gives you access to all the hosts of resources and benefits throughout the entire academic year. Um, if you don't have a host of chapter at all, then it's actually really easy to start one. You need to find an advisor who is willing to lead your chapter. That could be a teacher, a nurse, a counselor, a gifted facilitator, an administrator. You can even go outside of school and see if there is a health organization willing to actually help um, spearhead the start of a HOSA chapter. We have multiple different situations for the way our chapters are set up across Kansas. Um, and then you need five students. So with six people, you can start a HOSA chapter and then you get access to all of those opportunities, which includes um, learning, leadership, networking. Uh, imagine being able to be connected with healthcare professionals all across the state of Kansas. Um, and often we have them all at our conferences. So you show up in one spot and you have access to hundreds now of individuals that can help you with your future career and get you ready. Not to mention also our competitive events um, that allows you to practice and hone your skills to be a future healthcare professional. So a ton of opportunities that a student could take advantage of, but now correct me if I'm wrong, Tina, but there's the, for the teachers that are on the call or the counselors, there's also opportunities for them. Now, I think with the AHEC, there's something with an externship opportunity. Would you mind being able to share what that's like? And if a teacher would be interested in doing uh, or taking part in that, what might that look like for them? What can they expect? Yes. So um, I also work with the KU Area Health Education Center, the AHEC, and we provide multiple programming, both for students and teachers that are low cost or free um, for participation, particularly for teachers. We offer a summer teacher externship that is held at KU Medical Center over three days, and it occurs in July. The dates are currently not set for this upcoming year. We're wanting to make sure we don't overlap. Um, I am the primary contact for that, um, or you can go to KUMC. Edu, um, the KU Medical Center website, and search the AHEC, which is just A-H-E-C, and it'll take you to our main page, um, and there are, all of our programming is listed there, but honestly, I'm available for your questions. Please feel free to email me anytime. My email is still under my old name, so hopefully, um, Jaren, if you want to drop it in chat, please feel free, um, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to link you up. We have programming all over the state of Kansas. Um, HOSA is growing. So both of these things are great opportunities for students and teachers to be involved in. Well, thank you, Tina. Really appreciate everything that you're doing with students and growing HOSA across the state of Kansas. So thank you for being here. And the fourth of our panelists today, the last one that we're going to go to, we have Shonda Anderson, uh, Director of the Office of Apprenticeship in the state of Kansas. And Shonda, we're glad that you are here with us today. So again, introduce yourself, who you are, maybe what the office does. But I know there's a lot of talk about apprenticeships nowadays, especially with healthcare, but even also youth apprenticeships. So would you mind sharing a little bit about what all that looks like? And uh, again, what that opportunity could be for students or even adults on the call today? Yeah, absolutely. I am super excited to be here. Thank you, everyone, um, for participating in this phone call. Healthcare is such an important aspect of our economy, and we have a growing and robust economy in Kansas. So we want to make sure that um, we are pushing that forward. So uh, I am the director of the Kansas Office of Apprenticeship. My name is Shonda Anderson. I lead a team of seven people that are growing robust registered apprenticeship programs all across the state of Kansas. That includes skilled trades that you might traditionally think are part of apprenticeship, like construction or plumbing or electrical, but we're also growing rapidly and heavily in other occupational areas as well. Teacher education is one of them, healthcare, IT, advanced manufacturing, even agriculture. We can apprentice just about anything that's important to uh, a region, a, a community, and our overall economy. So if you have my slides, if you could put those up, thank you. Um, so this is our office. We are housed under the Kansas Department of Commerce with the Kansas Work System. Next slide, thanks. And just a quick breakdown on what an actual registered apprenticeship is. There's a lot of misunderstanding around this, so I love to jump into this. 
but essentially it is an employer designed and driven program. You have to have an employer on board, otherwise you don't have a registered apprenticeship program. So it really can be very much specific to whatever those regional needs are. In addition, you have structured on the job training. So you're getting paid to learn, which is amazing, right? You're going to take on a W-2 W two uh, paid job. You're going to have benefits, wages, you know, all the things that you would normally have if you're working out in the world, but it's going to count towards your education, which is just a game changer. We'll also include that job-related education there. That adds in all of the components of community college education or university-level education. We know different hospitals and things like that have their own educational systems, so we get to utilize the best of those worlds. You also have a wage progression as you move through a registered apprenticeship program and a high-quality mentorship program. So you're not going to just be out on the job on your own. You're going to be working with a uh, experienced mentor, someone who has been in the field for a long time, many of the people you've heard from today that will help along your educational process. And then you'll come out with a valued credentials, whatever those stackable credentials are or certifications or licenses that you need to have um, to, to be employed in those um, healthcare occupations. But you'll also have a completion certificate that's signed by the governor of Kansas, lieutenant governor of Kansas, and myself showing that you've engaged in all of these different activities and really come out as an incredibly well-rounded, um, experienced professional and probably be making more money than some of your friends. Um, with that, we can start at the age of 16 years old. Um, we don't have a lot of them in the state of Kansas yet, but we are growing rapidly and aggressively and really trying to um, make some really great waves. Can you go to the next slide? So right now in the state of Kansas, we have adult registered apprenticeship programs and can absolutely develop youth registered apprenticeship programs around medical coders, medical assistants, nurse assistants, licensed practical nurses or LPNs, surgical technologists, phlebotomy, and more. It, just about any occupation can be apprenticed. The possibilities are truly en endless. We are engaged in really high level conversation to get registered nursing, developed it as a registered apprenticeship program, home health aides, health unit coordinators, um, whatnot. The healthcare space and the utilization of registered apprenticeship is growing exponentially across the entire United States. So we have a lot of room to grow and a lot of room to expand, but I would love for Kansas to really come out as a strong leader in this space. So. If you are a student in the room that's interested in this, we have some information up on the website and you really need to push your parent, your counselor, your teacher, or maybe even a local employer to our webpage to get in contact with us. I've got the QR code right up there in the right hand corner. So take, be sure to pull your phones out, take a photo of the QR code and get a hold of us. Well, Shonda, thank you so much for all of that. And again, for all four of you, Michelle, Tina, Aaron, Shonda, um, thank you for spending time to share about some of the next steps that students and again, really anyone of all ages that is here um, listening today. Um, really glad that you're all here. And again, Cindy, I think we'll turn things over to you to wrap things up.